Hey guys, and welcome to the seventh episode of our advanced inventory system in Godot 3.1. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at how we can bring the items that we have found in our loot chest over to our inventory. Now, apart from that, we also have to be setting up some basic project settings like how we're going to open the inventory system from our map scene, how we're going to close it again, and we'll have to be defining a dictionary for our inventory. So our inventory will memorize what it contains between looting the different chests. And that same dictionary we'll be able to use in a future episode in which we'll be saving our inventory to JSON so that it can be reloaded when you restart the game at a later moment in the day or the next day. To start today off, we're in our loot panel. Now in our loot panel, we've already defined a, bu a button for loot all, which is currently non-functional. That will be one of the things that we could be doing today, or that we are going to be doing today. Now apart from the loot panel, our loot all button, all these loot panels, these six we have defined in here, from one loot one to loot six, are also buttons. What I want to set up is that you can either click one of these buttons to loot one individual item or you can press loot all to transport everything from loot chest to inventory. In order to do so, we're first going to be setting up these six loot slots to react to the same function. And once we have to find that, we can iterate over all six at the same time when we press the loot all button. Thereby, we only have to create one function, which will create both functionalities. To start this off, we're going to go to our loot button, which will be right there. And we're going to set this one up to react on button pressed. Now we're going to bring it all the way up to our loot panel and it can be called the same as this right here. Now we want to know which of the six panel slots is pressed and therefore we're going to give it a integer that it will pass along with it. And in our case, this is loot slot one. So we give it a one and we connect it. Now we're gonna be doing the same with all these other panels. We select the loop button, we connect, and as you can see, it has exactly the same function node because these nodes have exactly the same name. So as I do this, I will be able to rename all of them or connect all of them to the same function that got created right here with an extra argument which is currently set to zero. I'm gonna be setting up all the six buttons off screen and I'll see you back after that. That's all done. I have uh, connected all our six buttons and I've all given them an integer. I've also changed the extra argument zero into loop panel slot. You can change the name of this argument uh, as it comes in. Um, it's quite handy to do that. So whenever you look at your code in the future, um, you remember what you exactly did. Now, this function is going to be putting the contents of our loot chest into our inventory. But currently, we have only a user interface panel for our inventory. We don't actually have a dictionary. So let's first assign that. In our import data, uh, where we have loaded our item data and loot data from JSON file, these are the, is the singleton we've defined, we'll be adding a new variable, inventory data, and we're going to be filling it with 10 pieces of gold. Now, of course, when you open the user interface right now, it doesn't read this information from um, the singleton yet, but let's just say we start off with 10 gold. Now, next, we're going to be going back to our loop panel and we're actually going to be um, making this function. I've prepared this a little bit and um, basically what we're going to do is as soon as one of the buttons is pressed, first it's going to check the loop dictionary if it has that entry. For your reference, I've printed the loop dictionary right here. So this is an example of one of the loop dictionaries. And we have within our dictionary keys, which goes one to six for every entry within the loot chest. And then it has the contents in an array. This time is gold 15 pieces and gold 22 pieces. So what it's going to do when it says loot dictionary has loot panel slot is going to be verifying if it has the key, which will be one and two. And it's going to be verifying that with our integer one to six that we have entered. In other words, we fill our loop panel based on this dictionary where we combine the keys to loop panels. And now we're going backwards, verifying whether the loop panel is filled based on the dictionary which, which is, was originally filled. 
So with that, we verify if a panel is filled or not. Then, of course, if it's filled, we're going to be verifying whether the panel contains gold or another item. And we verify this because if we go back to our inventory and our graphical user interface, gold is going to go in this pile over here, which is simply a label underneath a gold icon. All the other items are going to go in one of our tabs, either weapons, armor, crafting, consumables or others. So we need to split this up into two separate types of loot um, to make sure that they all end up in the right place. So if the loot dictionary, loot panel slot, so that's going to be this one or two, and then within the array within that key, and an array always starts with zero, so in this case it's going to be the item name, is equal to gold, which in both of these cases it would be. Then select import data inventory data gold. So that's the inventory dictionary we have just defined within our import data. Take the gold value. So that's going to be the 10 we have defined earlier, or I should say that's over here. But it's going to say this, this 10 that you have now updated with it's going to be the number that you were 10 plus the number which is in the loot slot. So with this setup, we can press play and within our editor, um, have I set it up? No, we have not set it up yet. One moment, we can say that when we loot, yeah, when we have looted, we say print and we copy this variable right here. There we go. We can press play and we can see if our inventory is updating. Well, we don't have nothing, no gold to loot here. Let's go to the next one. Perfect. You can see we got 10 pieces right here. When we loot this, it becomes 25. When we loot this, it becomes 52. And we can go to the next chest. Hopefully we got some gold here. Yes, we do. 71. And when we scroll down, at 18 makes 89. So now we are updating our gold within our inventory uh, data, our dictionary, which we can load into our graphical user interface or in our uh, UI panel for inventory whenever the player opens its inventory. Now, to open your inventory, I've gone back to our map scene and I've updated the graphical user interface to include an inventory button. This is almost exactly the same as we have set up this user interface button um, only this time it calls the inventory, it loads it up as an instance, then adds it as a child. And I've connected the, uh, the close button of the inventory to, uh, to remove that child again, to create free that child. So if I press this button now, our inventory panel shows, and when I press the cross, it closes. Now, of course, we're not updating it with the gold value in our inventory data within our import data singleton. So that's going to be up next. Now, to set this up in our inventory is actually very easy. We only need one line of code for that. When we go to our inventory and we go to our script within the ready function, because we want to load the inventory data as soon as the inventory panel is finished loading, we are Oh, that's going, that's going wrong. Uh, we set a dollar sign. This brings us to the root of the scene. Now, at the root of the scene, we want to approach our label. Our label is right here. It's the gold counter within our tabs, which has all the buttons for the different uh, tabs. Um, in our label, we're going to go to copy node path, and we're going to be pasting that into here. So now we're at our label. And we're going to set the text of that label. And we set that text equal to import data, invent data, gold. Now, this is a label and our gold is currently a integer. And a label doesn't accept an integer. So we have to convert this into a string by putting this in between brackets with the string command. Now, when we load our inventory or load our map scene, we can press the inventory and we can see the 10 gold we got right there. We can close it. We can walk to a chest, loot 33 gold, close it again. We open our inventory and we got 43 gold. Now, you'll probably see something going wrong already. 
I can just keep pressing this, close it, and suddenly we've got a lot of gold. In other words, we have another exploit. We need to be removing that item from the chest as soon as it's looted. So let's do that now. To remove the item from our loot dictionary, we're going to be going to our loot panel and down the moment we have added the gold from the dictionary to our inventory data, we're going to erase the key including the array of data it contains from our loop dictionary. Now, as we play the game and we approach a chest, one with gold, uh, not two swords, with gold, we can loot this. We can see beneath down here, 30, it's looted. Now we can click it again, but it keeps being 30. It will still print the value because the print command still um, hits. But uh, other than that, it's not going to be adding any more gold. We can close it, we can loot it again, and it's gone. Now, of course, it would be better for our player experience if the icon disappears the moment you press that button and not that you have to reopen the chest to verify whether you've looted things or not. In order to do that, we only have to be adding a little bit of code underneath the erase function we just added. Now, this variable we're defining is simply the root um, up to which point the paths towards the nodes we need to be emptying is the same. So that's going to be the border, background, main nodes, loot slots, feedbox container, loot. And then to, on top of that loot, which is the loot we have selected right there, we need to add a one, two, or three. We already have that from our loot panel slot, our integer. We have parsed or given this function in the signal. So we add the string, because it is an integer, we have to first convert that of the loot panel slot. So then we are in our um, tree, our scene tree, up to loot one, loot two, loot three, loot four, etc. Then we get the node, we add that root slot, and we add the loot icon, loot button, which is the same in every single one of these panels. That's why I always advise you to keep these panels the same name as soon as you've made your variable. So the only variable, the only change within all these paths between these different loot slots is the one at the end there. And that's the only variable part that we have to adjust. That's what this little piece does over there. Now with that done, we add the uh, different elements or the different nodes uh, paths that we need to be approaching and we set the normal texture to null that will remove our loot icon then we set the text of our label to nothing which will remove the name gold steel sword steel boots etc and then we set the label to nothing oh, i actually got that backwards this label is for the quantity so the quantity for gold in this label is uh, for the name of the item so gold steel boots etc so with that done, we're basically resetting the loot slot on the go while we're in the loot panel and the item should disappear as soon as we click it and loot it. So let's try that out with our gold. We're in the gold, we click it and it's gone, but it is added now 32 there, 33 there. When we close this, we can open the inventory and that displays the 65 gold that we have found on top of the 10 gold uh, we already had, or the 55 gold we added on top. We can close that, we can walk to the next chest, loot the gold over here, next chest, loot this gold here, and we're ending up with 103 gold, and we don't cannot loot these um, gold pieces again, as we have removed them uh, completely from the game at this point. So far, so good. Now we can start adding our items to our inventory. For that, we're going to be needing a little bit more time than the time I have left in this video. So this is going to be a little bit short tutorial. In the next video, we can, we're going to be using the match function within Godot. Um, that is very similar to the switch function in some of the other programming languages, but with a, a few extra functionalities. The match function is really easy, uh, easy when you want to verify whether a item or a variable matches um, a, 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 a list of possibilities. If you don't use the match function, you end up using a lot of if statements after each other. And if you ever notice yourself doing that, um, if weapon do this, if armor do that, if, if, 
if, then you probably have wondered before, like, there should be a way to do that faster. Well, that's what the match command is for, and we'll be using that in the next episode. And when you've done that with our inventory tutorial, you'll be able to apply that knowledge to all your other parts of the game that you're programming. I hope to see you next time. I hope you like this video. If you do, please hit that like button, uh, hit subscribe, uh, smash that bell icon notification so the video pops up in your mailbox on Friday. And as always, if you have questions, put them down in the comments below or find me on Twitch. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, 9 p.m. Uh, GMT plus one European time, but the American time zones, both Pacific and East Coast, are down in the comments below for your convenience. I hope you have a good day, good luck coding, and keep those games coming. See you next time. Now, before I go, I do have to um, say one small thing I made two small adjustments to the code we have made earlier um, and your code won't be working properly if you don't include these changes. So within the loop panel, populate panel function, I have replaced variable counter is loop dictionary size with simply for counter is one. I have replaced if counter is not zero with if loop dictionary has counter and instead of counter is counter minus one is now counter plus one. And the indentant of this um, line is probably still um, on this side within your code. You have to push that back one tap or bring that forward one tap in order for the counter to properly update. Um, with that set, you should be able to reproduce exactly what I got up till now. Um, I wish you good luck coding. Thank you. See you next time.